Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. Sorry for that noise, <laughs> the neighbor's having karaoke upstairs, <laughs> so uh, if you hear that in the background, that's what that is. I, I have not started um, playing that sort of music <laughs> as a background entertainment. Today we are looking at a brand new premium Italian battleship, and that is the uh, Giuseppe Verdi. Uh, probably named after the composer, I would assume. And uh, if we're going by the description, it is a further development of the, it's really the Littorio class, although some people do call it the Vittorio Veneto class, but um, Littorio was supposed to be the first ship, so uh, that's what we're going to go with. Uh, the main difference here is that the Verdi has uh, 406, 406 millimeter guns. Which is not incorrect. The Italians wanted to have a 35,000 ton design with 406 millimeter guns. It ended up being a little bit larger, but the problem they had, similar to, what, to, similar to the French, was that uh, they had no actual design for a gun and uh, a matching turret of that caliber. And uh, designing that, testing that, getting the kinks worked out and all these kind of things, was literally just taking too long. That's why they ended up uh, just extending the barrel on the 381s to uh, make them very, very punchy. And they were very, very punchy. So these are the 406s that the Italians did not have time to come and uh, design and build for this class of ship. Uh, which means we technically have a tier 9 Vittorio Veneto, if we want it. Uh, we already have one of those, sort of. So let's start and compare a couple of things, because the Marco Polo actually exists. Uh, let's have a look at how she compares to the Giuseppe Verdi, and if there's a good reason to have one or the other. Uh, the Marco Polo gets a precise aim and a rapid reload, similar to what the Roma gets at tier 8. The Verdi does not. She gets the fuel smoke, which we know from the, uh, from the tech tree line, and she gets a secondary overload, which got me curious because um, I like to play these Itali uh, the Tech Tree Italian battleships quite aggressively, but um, I haven't really thought of secondary specking them, <laughs> so uh, we'll have to see how this goes. And the, uh, the, the scout plane is the same thing. Now, the eagle eyed among you have noticed something. Uh, the Marco Polo get semi armor piercing shells. They're conspicuously absent on the Verdi. So, let's compare. Uh, marginally more hit points, but the hull is effectively the same at the end of the day. Uh, the maneuverability is the same for all intents and purposes, and the guns reload a second faster. But you don't get a rapid reload, so uh, in effect the guns are worse, at least in terms of reload. The range is worse, and yes, we do get high explosive and armor piercing shells. Why is unclear to me? Well, it isn't, but um, okay, we'll get to that in a second. So we get uh, armor piercing shells and high explosive shells. For some obscure reasons, uh, these gun, these hypothetical guns, uh, at least they've, they've dated them to 1940 because the Italians would have, wouldn't have had time to design and make these during the, in the interwar period. Uh, for some reason, these exact same guns do less armor-piercing damage than the same guns on the Marco Polo. And obviously they don't have any semi-armor-piercing shells, but in return, they turn a little bit bigger, uh, a little bit faster on the turrets. Now here's where it gets really interesting, and I'm intentionally holding it like this, because these 152mm uh, secondaries, she gets the same secondaries uh, uh, for four turrets with three guns each. Uh, they reload faster. They have a better range, but that's where the semi armor piercing went. And that's also sort of where the problem goes. So instead of having the semi armor piercing main guns and having the HE secondaries, we get HEAP main guns, so traditional style, and we get semi armor piercing secondaries. Now these are 152mm semi armor piercing secondaries. Uh, the damage is, is too low. 140 is not enough damage for these guns because this is this is the same damage that the Marco Polo's guns do but with HE. So uh, the, the range is 
decent with 6.9 and we can we can overload these but 450 is not enough and these are only 150 mils and it's semi armor piercing and it's tier 9 the uh, auto secondaries which are effectively uh, glorified aa guns have a little bit better range but they also fire semi armor piercing so no high explosive from these things either uh, the AA is a bit worse, and the concealment is marginally better. So let's com let's let's do a very quick comparison to the Lepant to the Lepanto, the tech tree equivalent. Now we, we get the same fuel smoke. We get a worse <laughs> scout plane than the Lepanto, but in return we get the secondary overload that the Lepanto obviously doesn't have. Um, and, and by the way, the 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 gun. The gun graph here, there's something wrong with it. I'm not sure why, um, but uh, I mean, I agree that the Lepanto's guns are better, but anyway. Uh, same hole, um, comparable maneuverability, slightly faster, that thing. But yeah, obviously the Lepanto has four, um, ha has three by fours, and the Giuseppe Verdi only has three by threes. And obviously now, since the nerf, the Lepanto has a 26.5 second base reload, but the Lepanto gets semi armor piercing shells. Now, the Lepanto's armor-piercing shells are actually worse, which makes sense, because these are 381 millimeters. But the Lepanto semi-armor-piercing shells actually have the same, almost the same damage as the AP on the Verdi. And uh, so here's, here's where it gets really, 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 really interesting, because you have a ship that says, I would like to be a secondary spec brawler. But then you have guns in this thing that are not going to get anything done. Because these are 152 millimeter semi armor piercing secondaries. 6.5 second reload is good, but not that good. And 450 semi uh, points of damage on a semi armor piercing is abysmal. The other pro problem is that these 150s with, this, with the SAP are not going to get through a weak point on um, even on a tier 8 battleship. <laughs> they are struggling. They're struggling hard. So these. 152 millimeter secondaries are useless again against anything except destroyers uh, and the same absolutely same goes for the 90 millimeter secondaries if the 152s can't do anything the 90 mils aren't gonna do anything either and that's when I saw that that's when I thought oh dear <laughs> I think someone hasn't thought that through so let's have a look quick let's have a quick look at what we can do with the ship now obviously yes we can do the secondary gun sp uh, specialization and get the reload time down from both the mains and the auto secondaries we can also uh, put the secondary but mod battery mod one in here and actually you know buff the reload even further on these 150s uh, the, the other modules are just stock standard there's nothing surprising here we can also take a commander and give him the close quarters combat expert uh, skill, which further reduces the uh, dispersion on the secondaries. And that would be, and we can put the camo on, uh, which does not do anything for the secondaries, but uh, it does help a little bit with the main guns, which they are in sore need of, because the main guns on this thing are not as great as they should be. So, what do we have here? I think what they, I think what they've tried to do, is go roll with the whole um, secondary brawler sort of Lepanto style that you can do with these pretty amazing guns at at close at, at close range, and um, but they've taken the semi armor piercing out because they didn't probably want to go full on semi armor piercing for everything, because maybe that felt like it was too much. The problem is, the semi armor piercing on the secondaries. It isn't great. Now, I think we had another ship. Let me have a quick look. I think we had a, uh, yeah, the Napoli. That was a cruiser, but the Napoli, the Napoli, I believe, uh, yes. So these are, these are the same secondaries that you get on the Napoli. Only that the, um, I think the auto secondaries are better on the Napoli. And this is the same problem that you would have on the Napoli, that against something like battleships, you wouldn't be really be using this. But the Napoli is, is a really big cruiser. And the Napoli was fun because of the extreme, um, of the extreme concealment. But uh, if we go back here, the Verdi doesn't have that. First of all, it's a chunky ship and uh, relatively large turrets. 
And these secondaries just don't do anything. <laughs> I mean, look at these raised barbettes here. Uh, is that the same thing on the Marco Polo? Yes. So it's basically the same model. It's just with a different camo on and, and they've moved the, uh, the float plane launcher a bit to the side, but other than that, it's the exact same ship. Um, and, uh, I mean, this is chunkier than a Lepanto, honestly, but at least, at least it looks like with these extremely raised, um, extremely raised rear turrets. It makes sense to have the rear turrets raised, otherwise you'd be bl blasting your own float plane off the, <laughs> off the rear of the ship. But um, anyway, so this is where I thought, oh dear, I think they had the right idea, but uh, didn't realize that uh, these low caliber semi armor piercing are not necessarily going to work very well on a battleship. <laughs> All right, so let's give it a try. The first game is a tier 10 game, and we're fighting Midway, Kurfürst, Minnesota, Friedrich, a Buffalo, a Shimakaze, and a Yugomo. And it's Hourglass, so off we go. Um, well, against destroyers, yes, against destroyers the guns work. Now here's the, here's the funny part. If you were in a Lepanto, <laughs> and you're at the range where you can actually reliably hit destroyers with your secondaries, the Lepanto wipes them off the map with one salvo of their main guns. Uh, the Verdi can't do that, not easily, because, well, while the secondaries are great, she doesn't get these semi armor piercing on the main guns. Okay, anyway, uh, we are spawning with, I believe, um, a destroyer division. So we've got uh, an Adriatico and a Shimakaze on our side. The Shima should be able to spot, the carrier doesn't seem to be going anywhere. There is something going to come around this, um, this flank, but if it's a destroyer, I'm actually not super afraid of it. So uh, let's uh, let's make our way let's make our way slowly, uh, follow the Shima, and um, and see where he goes and give him fire support. Because if the the cruiser shows up anywhere here, then uh, we've got the armor piercing loaded uh, to be able to do something about it. So yeah, and there comes the Adriatico. That thing's quick. That thing should be quick. I need to do some reviews on the Italian um, on the Italian uh, destroyers. Anyway, float plane map. Get us something to shoot at. Is that thing stationary? I don't know. Let's see. Shots out. Shots out. But uh, we've lost the carrier scout at this point. So, and there comes the Shimakaze. Okay, that was um, that's eight good hits on on target. That wasn't terrible. Can I get anything else that I can get my guns on? Otherwise, I'm gonna have to deal with the Shima. I mean, Shima is, is, is uh, he's, I don't know what he's doing here, honestly. Shima, what, I, what is your plan here? Uh, anyway, let's get these secondaries to work uh, and secondary overload up. But I think that Shima is going to be dead before my secondaries even get there. But yeah, against destroyers, these secondaries are quite nice. But then again, the amount of damage they do is actually too low. Uh, 450 is just not enough on a 152mm gun. They should do around 600 or something. Anyway, uh, there's a Minnesota for us to shoot at, so let's get some shots out. And uh, I think I think now my uh, our job here is just to uh, just to tank uh, for for these two guys. Now, uh, because the flank looks like it's open, the guns are the the armor piercing shells on the guns are good. Now, don't get me wrong, the guns are not bad. It's just that uh, they don't have that funny gimmick that the um, that the Lepanto, Lepanto has, where she can just one shot destroyers. I am getting smoked up here, so um, just taking a little bit of return fire uh, from the Minnesota. But it's a fuel smoke from the Adriatico, so obviously it's not going to do an awful lot. And I am getting shot at by a Grosser Kurfürst, and if you know anything about the Grosser Kurfürst guns, that is not fun. So fuel smoke up, uh, just so we can open up the distance a little bit. There is the Buffalo. I would like to shoot the Buffalo, but I don't really have a, a good target, and my float plane is still on cooldown. So uh, a couple more shots out at the Minnesota. And then we'll just let them, um, we'll just distract them. <laughs> we'll let the, the Shima uh, and the Adriatico do, do their thing. Uh, that's the Freddy, there is the Buffalo. I would love to hit the Buffalo. So that's a priority target because I think, we, yeah, one of our destroyers has been air spotted. That should have been the Shima. So let's see if we can do something about the Buffalo because yeah, Shimakaze is running. And um, I will try and do my best to, uh, to distract these guys. And I think the buffalo just found all the Shima torps. <laughs> buffalo. <laughs> there was a Shima. You shot at it. How did you? Ah, anyway, what am I complaining about? It's the enemy team. Uh, there's also a midway over there. But um, uh, first targets first. It's the buffalo. And uh, I actually have him in secondary range. Against cruisers, the secondary sort of work. 
and yes, obviously um, uh, everyone starts shooting at me, and the buffalo uh, is trying to set me on fire. Not gonna damage control single fire. Lost one of my secondaries. But let's get the fuel smoke up and uh, and see that maybe we can avoid a little bit uh, of that return fire. Anyway, that's the buffalo dead. And double fire. Okay, that uh, damage control because the buffalo is dead. Uh, can we still grab the midway? Maybe I'm on relatively low hit points, but uh, yeah, yeah. eleven thousand hit points is not too bad. So and it looks like the GK is shooting at someone else. But uh, let's no, actually, um, who was that? Oh, that was the Minnesota. Yeah, <laughs> yep. I w uh, Minnesota was paying attention and did not look at the destroyer that's coming from his other from the other side. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Anyway, I, I've done my job. I've been I've been uh, tanking the shell fire from the big guns and let the destroyers have their fun without these guys paying too much attention. Uh, Shima, that is relatively close. You know that f that um, the curry has has hydro, right? But uh, I mean that's a that's a full spread of Shima torps. That is gonna hurt. Even if the Shima is gonna go down. Yep, <laughs> that is an ex Grosser Kur first, and that just leaves the Minnesota to deal with. Um, and we've still got three destroyers plus the carrier, so yeah, we, we've we've been there for, to uh, to soak up damage and um, give our our destroyers the freedom to to do what they do best. But uh, yeah, <sighs> could I have done this in a Lepanto as well? Sure, same thing, right? I mean, in this battle, it would have literally been the same thing. I wouldn't have been afraid of the Shimakaze because I would have just used the main guns against that thing, and the uh, the secondaries. Are kind of okay, I guess. I mean, we've we've done a little bit against the uh, what was it against the buffalo, but uh, it it wasn't uh, they weren't huge they weren't hugely hugely beneficial. So let's have a quick look at how much damage we did. Fifty three thousand is on the low end, but then again, uh, we have been taken out relatively early in the battle after uh, running the flank and tanking for the destroyers. And how much have we done with our secondaries? Uh, 7,000 points of damage, it's not terrible, but um, it's also not great. So, let's go again. In the second round, we're playing Epicenter, and we're up against Double Yama, Missouri, Musashi, and a Drake. No destroyers here, and uh, off we go. So, I'm bottom tier, and there are, <laughs> there are two Yamatos and a Musashi out there. That is a lot of heavy guns. <laughs> Which means that I do have to be somewhat careful. Uh, anyway, it's epicenter. You kind of need to play aggressively. And you can be rest assured that none of my teammates is going to do anything aggressively in this battle. Uh, but uh, stay at the long long range and go sniping. Uh, even though we do have a destroyer on our own. So, first position. Uh, probably next to that little island over there. And see if I can get some flanking shots in. It is a position that I can disengage from if I need to. I can either reverse around the island or I can um, just peel off to the left if uh, if they're pushing too much and then uh, then drag them away a little bit, provided we, we're actually holding the capture circle. And I can be inside the outer ring, so that's sort of where I want to be. And uh, it, it would allow me to... I mean, there are no destroyers on the enemy team, but if I was in a Lepanto, <laughs> it would allow me to get crossfire onto the enemy destroyers while they're trying to get behind the island in the center cup. Which is always uh, a good position to be in. It's um, if you're in a heavy cruiser or in a light cruiser, maybe not in a light cruiser, but in any kind of cruiser, you you can take this as well, um, and then just just disengage if you need to. And if they're leaving this flank open, I've got a couple of islands I can use as cover to run around. Okay, there's the bot zao. I've got nothing else to shoot at, so I might as well start with that thing. And obviously, I am spotted because I'm in a battleship, and by the looks of it, I am relatively far forward. There is the Drake. So uh, after that little salvo on the bot Zhao, uh, let's see if we can do something about the Drake. Our Drake has torpedoes, and there's a, double, there's a Yama and a Musashi, so fuel smoke up. And I am actually going to damage on this fire, because otherwise I'm visible within my fuel smoke, and I don't want to be visible for the big guns to target me, even if I risk some perma fires from the Drake. So let's get the secondary overload up, and see what we can do against that uh, British heavy cruiser. Not an awful lot. I mean, it does some damage on the secondaries. It's not terrible, but... Um, uh, it's uh, it's not a great amount. So against the secondary, uh, uh, against uh, a cruiser, you can get semi pens. Against battleships, you're going to be getting a lot of bounces. Even against a cruiser, you kind of have to target weak spots. But I need to disengage now. 
because um, okay, the Drake has run aground. Let's see if we can get another parting shot. But I'm getting a little far away from the capture circle from my from my taste. So we have, I think, at this point, uh, at this point, deterred the Drake, and we can now turn around and do something about uh, about the what do we have. There's a Yamato. I'm gonna get the float plane up just to get a better angle at him. And see if the if the Drake comes around, then I can get some parting shots at him out as well. So let's make our way back into the capture circle, shall we? Because that's where we want to be. Uh, against something hev as heavily armored as a Yamato, mm, guns at range, not really. Uh, yeah, I mean you've got you you you've got effectively you've got 406 millimeter guns. Ow, that was one of the big guns. Yeah, and that's why I'm so careful about them. Uh, you, you've, you've effectively got 406 millimeter guns in a tier 10 game. You are going to not do an awful lot unless it's at close range, which is what this ship wants to do. And of course, insta fire. It's the and insta double fire. So Damakun out, and now we just uh, get the heck out of here because my team is clustered up <laughs> in the outer ring, except for the destroyer, who's um, who, who doesn't want to be in the center cup because who needs capture points, but uh, who is chasing down the rest uh, the rest of them there. And you yeah, look at this. These guys are all full health because I've been tanking the whole enemy team for the last four minutes <laughs> in the bottom tier battleship. That's what I get for, for poking my nose out. So uh, these guys can now take some fire. And I'm going to try and keep the island between myself and the big ones and get some shots out. The dispersion is not great <laughs> on the main guns. But uh, that is kind of uh, what you what you would have to expect. Okay, the destroyer is being chased by the Drake. There's not an awful lot I can do about that. My uh, float planes on cooldown, but there's a stationary broadside Yamato. So at least we've got something to shoot at. And I am just trying to keep the island between myself and these guys to the point that I go undetected. So they get they get to shoot at somebody else. There we go. That's where I want to be. Shots out at the Yamato. And uh, now we're just uh, gradually doing some damage. We are holding two of the capture rings and we're, he we're head on points, we're one kill ahead. And if that Drake makes his way back into range, then um, I'm sure somebody can, can do something about him eventually. If these guys get tired of sitting still <laughs> and shooting at each other every 30 seconds. <laughs> okay, uh, I've got I have recovered a little bit of hit points, but that's my last heal. And uh, we, we are now pushing. So I think I can start uh, shifting flanks. There's the Drake back. Uh, let's see if we can get some revenge on that thing. And uh, can we get the kill on the Yamato? Nah, the Yamato is dead. Okay, Drake smokes up. Uh, this is a proper smoke, not a fuel smoke. So he might actually stop. So I'm gonna blind fire into the smoke. Yep, <laughs> that worked out. And I think the rear turrets uh, are not, uh, I haven't hit. But I need to get out of here because there is a Musashi. So uh, secondary overload up, and the secondaries actually have range. The problem is the secondaries aren't gonna do an awful lot. I'm trying to target the superstructure here uh, with these secondaries, but um, as you can see, they're bouncing off a Musashi superstructure. <laughs> So yeah, that's the problem with the hundred uh, with the low caliber semi armor piercing here in, in this tier. I, I mean, even the cruisers have um, have higher caliber semi armor piercing. Uh, you can sometimes you get lucky shots and you do some damage, but uh, uh, it's it's difficult. Uh, and uh, she doesn't also quite have the armor. To brawl in the same way that say a German battleship would brawl. So when I say that I like something like Lepanto and play that in a close range, uh, in a more close range fight, then um, I don't mean necessarily, you know, in a in a tanky brawler style like in a German battleship. But you do more of a sort of hit and run thing. So um, should you get this ship? Uh, I, honestly, I wouldn't. I think the uh, Lepanto is better in in every possible regard. Uh, and then the ship, and honestly, the Marco Polo probably is better as well. Uh, it's an interesting idea, and I love the idea of a brawling Italian battleship with second uh, with a secondary specialization. But uh, things like the um, things like the Napoli work because of their concealment, and even the Napoli is more of a meme ship, really. Uh, this thing, I don't quite see the point of it. Uh, Given the choice between this and the Marco Polo, I probably would get the Marco Polo. But honestly, uh, today, why would you? Just, just get yourself a Lepanto. It's still a great ship, even after the nerf. I don't think that has uh, taken too much away from that. And um, uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure why. <laughs> Let me put it that way. 
She has none of the none of the uh, none of the specialization from the Roma, and that's where the Marco Polo definitely has the edge. And uh, next to a Lepanto, she feels superf superfluous. So I would save my money here. Anyway, that's it for me today. Thanks, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.